Okay, first of all, uh, two points for a sketch like this, introducing a new angle, anything you want, but I'll just, I'm, I'm using alpha, so, but you could call it anything you want, it doesn't have to be alpha. But so two points, one point for, uh, one point for introducing a new angle that's from the horizontal up to Q, and then the whole sketch is worth two. You have to have a new. It has to have an angle with the horizontal. That's worth a point. You have to have some angle with the horizontal because that's what sine and cosine are based on. Angle swept from horizontal, right? Swept from horizontal x-axis. Okay. So then we're going to write the coordinates of all, all of these, right? So what's xi? Xi is. Yeah, so you have to also name, so do we call it little r? Is that what we named it? Doesn't have to be, but that's, so r cosine would be whatever angle you introduced. Okay, one point for those two. So you have to have your initial point R cosine, whatever angle you introduced, R sine, whatever angle you introduced. I just alpha. You did whatever. Doesn't matter. That's that's one point. What are we up to? Three? So graph is two. And then we got uh, point Q is plus one. Okay. And so then we do XF and YF. It's going to be r cosine of your thing plus the given one, which is theta. That's plus one. So each of those defining xi x, the point Q in terms of um, cosine and sine, and your new angle that you introduced, and then uh, the final point R in terms of cosine and sine, that's the sum of the two angles, the one you introduced plus theta, and that's worth a point. We're up to four points. Yeah? Yes. Yes. <coughs> So what is, this is AB, so this is A. Took you that long to, to, so XI is really that thing plus A. And then YI is that thing plus B. Because it's not, or the center of our coordinate system is not P. It's still 0, 0. So to get out to this X coordinate, we need A plus R cosine alpha. And then B plus R sine alpha. Okay? Same with this, right? Yep, exact same thing. It's still one point to get these right. So I got zero, right? I got zero. I got zero for this, and I got zero for this. Okay? So you have to have them looking like this now to get your point for each. <coughs> no, one point for each set. Not hard, guys. This is worth one point. This is worth one point. Okay. Then what are we gonna do? So we're gonna now we're gonna rewrite these. We gotta get rid of what? We gotta get rid of angle alpha and r, right? We gotta get rid of. F. So we're gonna rewrite x f is. R times, and we're going to use what? Cosine alpha, cosine theta, minus R sine. I'm just going to distribute also in the same step. Is that okay? Plus A. And Y final will be R. 
sine alpha cosine theta plus r cosine Did I do it right? Okay, that step is worth, say, two. Okay, unfortunately, here's the nature of this. If you if, if you're to a point where you, you, you're you not matching up with what I've done, you can't really get any more points left on this. Okay? You can't. So you, you have to start correctly or else there's just no, there's no, there's no two ways to do this. So you, you've got to really be here to keep getting points. And if you're not, you could, I guess you could make an argument later, but I'm, I'm not really seeing how you could not do what I've written and still have more credit later. So that that's you can show me maybe maybe it is true but it's possible but I'm not I'm not feeling that okay so what are we gonna do now so now we see that what we need to get what is uh, so r cosine alpha is what x i minus a so I'm gonna have I'm gonna what am I doing I'm first grabbing this right here. And I'm seeing that that's xi minus a. And then our sine alpha is yi minus b. From the first set of equations. And similarly, So R cosine, no, I want this down here, right? Yeah, so I want, I want this thing, I want that one down here, and this one. So I, I got the order wrong, anyway. So now R cosine alpha, again, Xi minus A. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And then plus what do I got? R sine alpha y my y i minus b times and then plus b. Okay. Oh yeah, so this is now two plus two plus two. Okay, and so my hints in the in the in uh, instructions that last time was to we want to recover the same rotation matrix, and we know that's the cosine, negative sine, sine, cosine. So that means we gotta we gotta move this a b over here, so that we can write this matrix multiplication of this this stuff right here. So this is what we want to have the matrix multiplication be, and then we have the exact same rotation matrix. So that means that. Well, I guess we could, we just still leave it here. So we, we want to. So that red part is where the um, the matrix multiplication is, and it's the matrix multiplication of cosine theta, negative sine theta, sine theta, cosine theta. And then, so the other matrix would be xi minus a, yi minus b. But then that whole thing plus, I could say plus the matrix a, b. that and then the last step would be if we wanted to do it we could write this all as a matrix and so this x this is r 
R equals rotation matrix times what is this? This is Q minus B. Plus Questions on grading or otherwise on that? Yes. Point R. Point R is the rotation matrix sign. Q minus B matrix. And then plus B. Questions on grading. So we're on it. Is there a fourth point? So out of 12. Point. So I don't understand a point. What do you mean a point? Like a, a new point on the graph somewhere? Maybe, yeah, I guess, I guess so. I think I think it's okay. You can look at it later. Yeah, I think it's okay. That's fair. Is that stretch or a stretch to start? So what, I'm not sure about how else it could be, so what, what do you have? Translation, then a rotation, then another translation. So what's what's happening in four dimensions? What is what is this doing? So so what does this end up doing? How does it how does it work? How does this this what's that? How does it translate to the work? Yeah, so Q minus B then takes that this the whole thing, P, basically translates into the origin. And it rotates at the origin, so it's using just plain old sine and cosine. And then it moves it back, right? Because that's at and then B, so it moves it back. So it, it translates to the origin, does the rotation, then moves it back. So it doesn't do all three of those things. Because it needs to be all three of those things. Because those three things are kind of connected. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's just your rotation. Okay, other questions? Yeah. Uh, 
still pay for that one on the outside, but you need to enter the federal coordinates to get the right price. For, you're talking about this this whole thing on the right. That's okay, but it's it's. Uh, Be anywhere else in here? So how did how did so yeah? But when it comes to this substitution in here, you you need to split them up into the x sign. You didn't. You can't just use p here. Is what I'm saying in the in the middle here. But that it's impossible to do if you're writing out the x and y separately. Because Q includes an X and a Y coordinate, and P includes an X and a Y coordinate. So if you're writing out separate X and Y equations, you can't use P's and Q's in here. Does that make sense? You can't write X equals something with P in it, because P is an actual X and a Y Okay, so that brings us to the, uh, are we, any more questions about the derivation? So it was, so I wanted to give you a chance to extra credit, but I also wanted to see kind of like who took it seriously. You really, who really dug in and learned and took that thing by the board. So redo the derivation for the, the Newton point. Took that seriously. Okay. So. Let's talk about So here so I, I'm catching this on this is live on camera now, so last time I explained this I wasn't recording. So now I'm recording and this is the this is the project again. You've got you've got center one, which you can use a slider to manipulate its x and y coordinates. Center two, also you can you've got sliders to change its coordinates. So x equals about four, and y equals one point six one. You can change the the three points of the triangle. You can change those. Here I'm showing. So I'll just up a little bit here, zero, one, two. All right, so now I got that triangle based on the, the coordinates of the vertices. And then again, angle one is going to then rotate. Angle one is going to rotate it about the first center. And then once you decide on a spot here that you like, then angle two. We'll take that image, the rotated image, and rotate it about center two. Okay, so you've got the key tool to do this, and that is what R comma. Now we use the letters we used before. What were, what were we using before? P C A. Is that what I used? And what is it? So first we're going to, if uh, C is the center, first we're going to take P, what, and? Move it back to the origin, right? We're going to translate it back to the origin, and then we're going to rotate it according to cosine A, negative sine A, 
sign A and cosine A again. And then, once it's once we've got it rotated, we're going to put it back where it started, or put put back the rotated point, translated back into the original image. Okay. So, yes, sir. So we, we, got, we got to think about, I mean, it could be, yeah, so if you're, if you're going from point P to point C, those are, before we do any rotations, those are, those are fixed, okay? So you got to think about between what two points you want to draw that line, okay? So yeah, if you draw a line between P and C, it'll, it'll always draw a line between P and C. But if you want to draw a line from a rotated point to another point, you got to think about how you're going to do that, okay? But does that help? Um, is it P one probably? I would think. So yes, P one. So, so as soon as you start to rotate, you notice there's a line that connects to one of the points in the triangle. That's P1. That's the first whatever you define as P1. But if you have a good grasp of functions and function notation, which we tried to work on hard this semester, then, then basically once you, you, once you kind of crack this, it's just a lot of typing. Of getting used to it. It's just easier than it looks. So you, you've got the tool, you get the function, you get to know what that function's doing, how to use function notation, what the function notation represents. You're home free. Okay, it's just a little bit a little bit of time to make it work. So what did I say was week from Thursday? Okay. Last day class, a week from this Thursday? No, it's next Wednesday. A week from the last day class. Everyone, really try to work on this by yourself, okay? If, if you're going to help each other, ask, look at what they've done and ask questions. Don't, don't hand over your, you know, your discoveries and your uh, progress. Don't hand it over to someone else. Really, everyone needs to just make sure to figure this out. This is really about, do you understand functions and how they work? Okay? And how, and it's just emphasizing, in terms of making animations, how powerful functions are, how useful and productive they are. Okay, so that that's what we're we're ending up with this with this rotation. 